full service day. All right, good evening, everyone. I'd like to call this uh, council meeting to order. Mary Jo, can you call the roll? Meg Ray Chappie. Here. Andy Selgertz. Here. Kathy Pucci. Here. Aaron Borowski. Here. Kevin Tansky. Here. Sue Grodick. Here. Ryan Van Kirk. Here. Would you please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? The Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Please be seated. Please join me in prayer. Dear Lord, we thank you for the time that we have once again to gather as a council and as administration of the city that you've given us the privilege of living in, Lord, and serving. We thank you for the chance that we have to discuss these issues tonight. We know there's a lot of sickness going around the communities in this area. We pray that you'll please uh, provide healing, help those that are ill to get uh, beyond the men very soon. Lord, we thank you for the safety you gave us in our elections once again uh, here in America last Tuesday. Lord, we thank you that we live in a nation where that's the case. We pray that you'll please help, help those things to continue. Lord, bless our time tonight as we discuss these issues. We pray that we will make wise decisions for the residents of this city. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. The first item on our agenda this evening is the approval of minutes from our last meeting, October 24th. Any comments or questions? I move to approve. Second. To approve the minutes. Meg Ryan Shackey? Yes. Andy Selhurts? Yes. Kathy Pucci? Yes. Aaron Borowski? Yes. Kevin Tansky? Yes. Sue Grodin? Yes. At this time, we'll have a public session. If anyone in the audience has anything to say for the good and well for the city of Brooklyn, please step forward, state your name and address, you'll be recognized. Please remember to keep your comments to five minutes or fewer. There's no one. Okay. We'll now move on with reports of committees, commissions, and boards. We'll begin this evening uh, with our Domestic Abuse Commission, Councilman Ryan Chucky. I just wanted to give a brief thank you to everybody who donated to the collection last month to help raise awareness for Domestic Abuse Prevention Awareness Month, and uh, all of the goods went to the Journey Center. For anybody experiencing domestic abuse or knows someone who is, the Journey Center has a 24-7 helpline which anybody can call or text into when they're ready. The number to call or text is 216-391. Four three five seven. That ends my report. Thank you. Next up is the rec board, Councilman Tansky. Thank you. City of Brooklyn <clears throat> Christmas kickoff begins with a Christmas pajama night at the North Polar Express Skate, aka the Brooklyn Rec Center, on Friday, December 9th, from 6:30 p.m. to 8 p.m. Pictures with the Polar Express train. Believer Bells, Hot Cocoa, Letters to Santa, and Ice Skating with Christmas Music. Skate rental is free, but limited sizes are available. Special Christmas crafts will be available for purchase. Registers, registration is required. Sign up now at www.brooklynrec.com. Next Recreation Board meeting will be held November 21st in the Rec Center meeting room, 7 p.m. Concludes the report. Thank you, sir. Next up is our legislative update. Mr. Uh, thank you, Council President. Uh, my update today is actually going to be dealing with the uh, employer contributions to Ohio Police and Fire Fund. Uh, the Ohio House Insurance Committee will be having its third meeting on House Bill 512 at 10 a.m. this Wednesday, November 16th, in the hearing room of 116 at the Ohio State House. This bill would increase the contribution amounts that employers of full time firefighters and full-time police officers must take make to the Ohio Police and Fire Pension Fund over a five-year period up to 26 and a half percent for both police and fire. That is my report. Thank you. The next up is the Planning Commission. Councilman Grunick. Thank you. At November 2nd meeting, the Planning Commission considered two items. The first was a request from Cisco Imaging for a monument sign for Memorial Heights at 8251 Memphis Avenue. And the second was a recommendation back to City Council for approval for legislation 2022-34 through 2022-42. Um, those are the ordinances pertaining to the revised zoning code, which would be going before voters in the May ballot. 
the next, sorry I didn't look this up, the next Planning Commission meeting is the first Wednesday, which will be December 7th at 6 p.m. And that concludes my report. Thank you. Next is our school board liaison, Council Bucci. Thank you. Um, this month the board has altered their meeting schedule. Their work session is tomorrow, Tuesday, November 15th at 6 p.m. in the Treasurer's Conference Room. And then their regular meeting is Tuesday, November 2nd at 6 p.m., Room 173. That completes my report. Thank you. Thank you. Next is our Public Safety and Environmental Committee, Council Mitchell. The Public Safety and Environmental Committee will be meeting. Uh, we have a tentative meeting for 6 o'clock on November 28th, which is the date of our next regularly, regularly scheduled council meeting. That ends my report. Thank you. Next is the Committee of the Whole. We did meet at 6.15 this evening uh, to discuss the following. We did have three notifications, the first of which was an award of $737,800. Um, through the ODOD Building Demolition and Site Revitalization Program. We've talked about this in the past. Uh, we were seeking funds from this program to help with the uh, raising of this building uh, once the new city hall is completed, and we were approved for those funds. Uh, there is a 25% match that the city would be responsible for, but Cuyahoga County uh, will be covering that match. And so um, the mayor indicated that the total cost for this project will come in under those funds, so that would be 100% funded by um, that program. So we're grateful for that. Uh, next was a $600 donation from Triad Engineering for the city's Thanksgiving program. So we thank Triad for once again partnering with the city to help those in need this Thanksgiving season. And then another one very similar to that are 75 gift cards, the amount of $20 each from Minutemen Ohio Comp, once again for the city's Thanksgiving program. So they've done this in the past as well. So thank you to Minutemen Ohio Comp for that. Under legislation from our last meeting, Ordinance 2022-27, uh, was recommended by council to authorize the mayor to enter into a lease agreement with PCs for People Minnesota. Um, this is to help with the uh, broadband expansion program in this area. Um, if this is adopted, uh, this would allow uh, Cuyahoga County to and this uh, PCs for People Minnesota to use the rooftops of a couple of our buildings uh, to install antennas uh, to help uh, with the furtherance of Wi-Fi um, in this area. On second reading this evening is Ordinance 2022-29. This is authorizing the capital improvement plan for 2023, and this was discussed at length at our last meeting. Ordinance 2022-30 amends section 505.21 uh, for the hunting, poisoning, and trapping of the city ordinances. Again, this was discussed at our last meeting. This would increase the penalty uh, for uh, violating this um, ordinance that already does exist. Ordinance 2022-32, uh, this has been referred to uh, the Public Safety and Environmental Committee uh, was just uh, mentioned by uh, Mrs. Ryan Schock. It'll take place prior to our next council meeting. Uh, this is um, enacting a new Chapter 765 Apartment Complex Security. Um, among other things, it would require um, security cameras to be installed at residential uh, rental locations having three or more units. And we will have further discussion um, at that committee meeting uh, when it is scheduled for uh, the 28th. Next is Ordinance 2022-33. Uh, this is on second reading. This would amend the eligibility for the snow removal services for the city. And again, we discussed this at length actually in our last two meetings. Ordinance 2022-34 uh, through Ordinance 2022-42. Uh, these are the ordinances that was just mentioned by Mrs. Grodick uh, that would allow for the adoption of the new zoning code that would then pre be presented to the voters um, in the May primary. Um, and that those are on second reading. Under new legislation this evening, the first several are on first reading, but hope to pass by suspension of the rules. Uh, the first is authorizing a community cost sharing grant with an agreement with the Northeast Ohio Regional Sewer District. Uh, this is something that we uh, partner with the sewer district each year, um, and this deals with the uh, water, soil and water conservation district. Uh, next is the approval of an application for the community development uh, block grant program. Um, and this is to help uh, offset the cost for the natatorium uh, roof re replacement project. Uh, that cost is a little over a million dollars. And if we are awarded these funds, it will be $150,000 that would go towards the cost of that project. Next is resolution 2022-42. Uh, this is approving an application with the Cuyahoga County Supplemental Grant Program. 
and this is for the exterior home repair grant program for our city. Um, this would be a $50,000 grant that residents would be able to apply for uh, to help um, with the um, exterior improvements of their home. Uh, next is resolution 2022-43. Uh, this is the land and water conservation fund um, application and uh, this is to help cover the costs of the lights and security cameras in Marport, Marport Park. It would come from the land and water conservation fund uh, through the Ohio Department of Natural Resources. Uh, the total cost for that project is $165,000. Uh, if this, we do receive these funds, it will be 50% of that total for $82,500. All four of those council did recommend, or excuse me, the committee did recommend that council adopt by emergency. The next four pieces of legislation, excuse me, five pieces of legislation are on first reading. The first one is authorizing the marriage engine agreement with Senior Transportation Connection to provide senior bus transportation services to the city of Brooklyn. Currently, the city provides this service in-house uh, with our own vehicles and our own employee. Uh, at the end of the year, uh, that employee will be, re will be retiring and so the city is looking to uh, move to a third party uh, senior transportation connection to provide those services. Um, and it's, uh, we will keep the vehicles. Uh, this is gonna be on a trial basis for a six month to a year to see how it goes. We've heard very positive uh, comments from other cities that use this uh, transportation connection. Uh, so if this is adopted, the city will move to that for the time being. That's on first reading. Uh, next is resolution 2022-44. Uh, this will enact a new section of our uh, animal prohibitions in the city and it will allow for the keeping of chickens in the city. And uh, Mr. Butler and the committee ran through a whole laundry list of what would go on if this ordinance um, is adopted. Uh, it's on first reading. It has been uh, referred to the Public Safety and Environmental Committee. It will be a topic of discussion at our November 28th meeting if that meeting does indeed take place on that day. Next up is Ordinance 2022-45. This is the uh, amended annual appropriations for 2022. Uh, Mr. Raguz will give an update on what this entails when he gives his report later in the meeting. As well as Ordinance 2022-46, which is the appropriation budget for 2023. Uh, this was the topic of discussion at our um, budget meeting that we had last Monday night. And again, Mr. Raguz will uh, hit the highlights of that as well when he gives his report. Uh, Ordinance 2022-47. Uh, this is amending uh, amendment 2022-43, and this amends the wage schedule for part-time, full-time administrative employees. Mr. Uh, Raguz went over that. I'll go over it very briefly uh, just to get on the record. Uh, but the first adjustment would be an adjustment to uh, the top range from 80,000 to 85,000 for the um, assistant building commissioner. Uh, adjustment to the recreation department, excuse me, the, the adjustment is for the recreation department manager in 2023. Uh, next is an adjustment to the top range for the housing manager from 60000 to 65000 for 2023. And these adjustments are per the 3% increase uh, that is being um, put through with uh, the unions. Uh, next is the part-time administrative uh, position uh, to increase the, the bottom range to uh, incorporate the Ohio minimum wage that has gone up to $10.10 an hour. And that's the case for part-time administrative, part-time recreation, part-time property maintenance inspector, as well as part-time uh, public service and then the, uh, another and, and also to the um, intern position and then lastly uh, was to update wage ranges uh, based upon analysis for comparable communities for the auxiliary police officers school guards part-time jailers uh, special police officers part-time law enforcement and service clerks <coughs> as well as kennel managers and uh, that is to uh, make Brooklyn's uh, wages uh, comparable with other communities and that is also on first reading and then last piece of legislation uh, was accepting Ordinance 2022-48. This is uh, off for first reading of hope to pass by suspension of the rules. Uh, this accepts the medical insurance renewal for Medical Mutual of Ohio uh, for the coverage dated January 1 to December 31st. Uh, this is uh, hope to pass by suspension of the rules because there is no cost increase. Uh, for 2023, we have it at a 0% per the contract we signed with them last year. All right, that is all that we discussed in Committee of the Whole. Again, that takes place Normally at 6.15, prior to the start of all regularly scheduled council meetings, it takes place right here. All are welcome to attend. All right, that concludes our reports of our committees. We'll now move on with reports of council. We'll begin this evening with Mr. Selvers. Thank you. Good evening. Thank you to the 35 students, along with the several teachers and assistant principal from Brooklyn High School, who came out last Tuesday to rake the leaves for the seniors. We had a list of 16 homes to cover that day, and actually we added a few 
such as the one in Memphis Villas where we had two homes on one side of the street. Older gentleman was already working on his own yard on the other side of the street. So since we were there, we just kind of went along and helped him finish up. So it was a good day. Uh, tomorrow, November 15th, is the 25th anniversary of America Recycles Day. On America Recycles Day, the EPA recognizes the importance and impact of recycling, which has contributed to American prosperity and the protection of our environment. Current recycling rate has increased from less than 7% in 1960 to the current rate of 32%. Congratulations to the following homes as being chosen this year's winners in the Halloween Home Decorating Contest. 6303 Northcliffe, 6408 Delora, 6223 Trainmore, 6215 Trainmore, 4357 Rockland, 9010 Ansonia, 8612 Outlook, and 7412 Taunton. Uh, thank you to everybody, and there were a lot, a lot of other homes. They, people took the time to decorate. It's much appreciated by probably the older kids, my, our age and a little bit in our age and the young kids too. And for everyone, just have a peaceful and joyful Thanksgiving, and it concludes my report. Thank you. Mrs. Pucci. Thank you. Good evening. Um, I'd like to thank the voters for supporting the renewal for our schools, and it was really nice to see that it passed by a very healthy margin. According to the unofficial results, it was 66% in favor, 34% opposed. I'd also like to thank all those who volunteered for this effort. Uh, including residents Steve Herbick and Vern Cutright, who led the uh, committee and the effort, and also um, Mr. Marcus, who is the treasurer of the Support Our Schools Committee. And I'd like to wish all of our residents and all of our employees and their families a very happy Thanksgiving. That completes my report. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bresky. Thank you. <laughs> this past week, I was able to attend the open house for the Avenue at Brooklyn. It's a convalescent hospital rehab care center that's located right behind Ridge Park Square at 4700 Idlewood. It'll have a slightly over 100 private suites and I spoke with a few of the directors the other night and they feel as though it's very important for them to be in Brooklyn. They want to be engaged and involved with the community. And I'd like to also personally welcome uh, the two young gentlemen that are now running the business Tier Zero at Ridge Park Square right by the AMC Movie Theater. They had a grand opening this uh, past Friday. Uh, very pleasant being there. Uh, and then also this past Friday at our local Bedoff Plaza, I got involved with the World's Gym and setting up a Toys for Tots uh, box donation at their facility. The toys will be collected on the 14th of December and I'll personally take them to the warehouse myself. And also this past Friday was Veterans Day. I'd like to say uh, thank you to all of our veterans that live not only in Brooklyn, but Cuyahoga County. And in saying that, it's got to be said that there are some veterans that do much better than others. Uh, some deal with bad physical scars, mental scars, and there is assistance out there uh, through CuyahogaVets.org. Their phone number is 216. 698-2600 and the other number is 1-866-915-8387 and that concludes my report. Thank you, Jesse. Congratulations to the Brooklyn City Schools on the renewal levy. I'd like to wish all the residents and their families and friends a happy Thanksgiving and I'd like to thank Andy Selhurts he had um, lights out on Newberry, and I called him at 10 o'clock at night, and he dropped everything, and ran over there, and got the lights back on. <laughs> now that was service. Thanks, Andy, I do appreciate it. No, I'm just kidding. He went, did go over there the next day to find out what poll was out, and he did contact the appropriate people, and um, I don't know if that light's on now, Andy, or we're still working on it. Still working, still working on but no, I do appreciate it. Thanks. And that concludes my Thank you, Mrs. Brodick. Thank you. Yesterday, November 13th, was International Kindness Day. And even though International Kindness Day has come and gone, I think kindness is something that we can spread throughout. But especially during this, um, this month and the upcoming month, 
um, especially in, in our holidays. Um, and with that note, I would like to thank Triad Engineering and Minuteman Ohio Comp for again, their generous donations to help our community um, through Thanksgiving. Um, Brooklyn Schools is also sponsoring the Brooklyn Cares Christmas program. So the last note that I saw, there were 48 families that were asking for some support for Christmas. And um, it's a wonderful program, and our community also, through our schools, really supports that. So I appreciate that also. And I also would like to say Happy Veterans Day, or wish the veterans my thoughts. Um, Brooklyn Schools put on a very nice ceremony once again, and it was wonderful to see the veterans in our community come to that ceremony and to watch the children you know, who are as young as five and as old as 12 and 13, be able to see veterans among our community, their grandmas and grandpas and aunts and uncles and mothers and fathers. And one of my favorite stories is when I was teaching first grade, we, there was a, um, one of my students and her grandfather was there as a veteran and we always say you can go sit with your veteran and, and when the principal came she looked at me and she said I don't have a veteran there that's my papa <laughs> and just to see through her eyes that's that's her papa so to be able to show the children that they are our papas and our dads and our mamas and but but we all look at them very specially especially on Veterans Day so thank you very much to our veterans for your service and our active military also and that ends my report. Thank you, Mr. Richard. I just have one thing kind of going on what Sue said with the Brooklyn CARES program. The Cuyahoga County Division of Senior and Adult Services is doing an Elves for Elders program this holiday season. So between now and November 30th, they are looking for elves to help spread holiday cheer to their clients this winter. If you're interested in signing up or learning, learning more, you can reach out to Daphne James at 216 Six nine eight four seven three one. I just hope everyone has a good uh, Thanksgiving, and we'll see you after that holiday. That ends my report. Thank you. Next up, Mary. You said you had one. I'd also like to thank our veterans. We had a um, nice coffee and donuts, uh, courtesy of the Avenue, which Aaron mentioned, who just opened up. So already trying to participate in the community and be involved. So we thank you for that. And then one other thing, um, I'd like to congratulate and wish well Jim Catania, who retired. Uh, Jim, he spent his career in the service department here. He started in September uh, 25th, 1995, and he retired on October 12th of this year. He was also a very reliable employee, always showing up to work, a uh, valuable labor and driver. Uh, he worked diligently at maintaining the beautification and safety of our streets, our neighborhoods, and parks throughout the years. He was also a special auxiliary police officer since 1995. And uh, we just thank him for his service, and I am sure uh, once he gets a few months under his belt, being retired, he'll come back and work as an auxiliary again. So you'll probably see him around and continue to see him. So congratulations and best of luck. All right, thank you, Mary. And we'll now move on with the legislative portion of our agenda, the three notifications I already um, read earlier in the committee of the whole report. Oh, Tom, I skipped right past you. That's okay. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Mr. Raguse, please, by all means. So two, two items for me tonight um, as a follow-up to Council President Van Kirk's um, report on the committee of the whole meeting. Um, just more information on Ordinance 2022-45 to amend the 2022 Appropriation Ordinance. Um, so some of the highlights as far as this is concerned, um, for the general fund purposes, uh, we're increasing other expenditures in the police department by $55,000 to account for higher increases in gas prices. For the ice rink, uh, we're decreasing wages and benefits by $30,000 and increasing other expenditures by $30,000, so wash there. The in increase in the other expenditures is, uh, is due to the repairs of the high street dehumidification per city council approved ordinance number 2022-35. 
In the polls, uh, we're decreasing wages and benefits by $60,000 $60, to account for unused uh, wages and benefits for part-time personnel services. Senior, service, senior services, we're decreasing wages and benefits by $10,000 due to the senior center vacancy. In the building department, we're increasing overall expenditures by $152,000. Majority of these are as a result of an increase in reimbursable expense reimbursable expect inspections as well as the community development supplemental program that um, we go through the county for these monies um, these expenditures we get reimbursed for so much of this is going to be a wash as part of our as, as it relates to our financial limits on the service garage we're decreasing wages and benefits by hundred twenty thousand dollars due to the vacancy in the, in the mechanic uh, position we're increasing other expenditures by eighty thousand dollars for additional gas and repairs and in the um, transfers and advances, we're increasing that by $3.5 million. So this was a topic of discussion um, thoroughly as part of our two budget uh, work sessions with city council. We're increasing a transfer from the general fund to the capital reserve fund by, of $1.5 million to set aside money for future needs as far as the recreation center is concerned. We're increasing an advance from the general fund to the TIF fund by $1.325 million to pay off the bond anticipation note associated with the American Road Project that we took uh, a few years ago. And we're also increasing an advance from the general fund to the capital reserve fund by $560,000 to pay off the bond anticipation note for the recreation center roof. So overall, general fund, general fund amendments increase of $3.647 million. Much of that, 95% um, of that as a result of the increase in the transfers advances of $3.5 million. In all the other funds, um, some of the highlights, uh, we're increasing other expenditures in the street construction fund by $65,000 to take into account higher gasoline prices. We're increasing other expenditures in the state highway fund by $35,000 to for the to pay our portion of the Burke Park Road project. This was previously approved as part of the capital budget amendment um, by city council a month or two ago. Um, this is a timing difference. We initially set aside money for this, or budget money for this in 23, but our, our share is due this year. So we're, we're going to have to account for that. In the community development block grant fund, we're increasing other expenditures by $116,000 to take into account or the CDBG portion of the Markhart Pork Lighting and Security Cameras Project. In Fund 221, Local Fiscal Recovery Fund, we're increasing it by $800,000. Um, this is a result of the $750,000 of county, of ARP money that we're receiving as a, as a pass-through from Cuyahoga County that we're going to pay a portion of the city center project for, and also additional grant dollars that we received for the police department for the um, OCJS grant that we discussed at the budget work session last week. In the capital improvement fund, we're decreasing by $480,000 as part of the capital plan update that was approved by city council on October 24th to take into account projects that we are deferring to next year um, as a result of either supply chain issues or um, for the um, for one of our projects we only received one bid on for the um, Memphis Road project, or the I-480 Tiedemann project, I should say. In the capital reserve fund, we're increasing it other expenditures by $880,000 to pay off the debt associated with the um, recreation center roof and to also take into account an increase in the recreation center roof um, project that we received this year. And in the TIF fund, we're increasing the other expenditures by $1.124 million um, to pay off the bond anticipation note for the American Road Project. Overall, um, we're increasing these the budget amendment by $7 million. And again, as I'd like to mention um, annually when I do this, these are conservative not to exceed estimates. I, I anticipate our actual costs will come lower than these amounts, but these are conservative not to exceed estimates. And I will do a one final review of this ordinance uh, prior to, to the third reading on December 12th to, to further look into it and see if I need to adjust anything as a result of that. And then the second piece is um, for the 2023 Annual Appropriation Ordinance 2022-46. Uh, some of the highlights as a result of this. Um, in the general fund, now this was a topic of discussion at our budget work session last week. Overall general fund 
um, appropriation ordinance of $17.6 million. Um, this is $1.3 million more than the initial 2022 budget. Um, this is most. This is as a result of um, wages and benefits. Um, Two hundred sixty-five thousand dollars in in wages set aside for twenty-three, as compared to twenty twenty-two. That's a three percent wage increase across the board. Uh, Four hundred twenty-seven thousand um, dollars. We received ARP ARP money this year that we used to offset public safety personnel costs in the police and fire department that we will not be receiving in twenty-three. So that has to be made up within the general fund. And also staffing adjustments as a result of the fire department staffing that we discussed last week and as a result of hiring two additional law enforcement clerks positions as well so all those changes take into account 1.2 million dollars of the additional 1.3 million dollars for the 2023 general fund budget other and the other funds um, some highlights are economic development fund of 2.46 million dollars that's an increase of six hundred thousand dollars to take into account additional capital projects budgeted out of the economic development fund and the capital improvement budget of $6.6 .6 million and takes into account, that's an increase of $3.6 million as a result of increases in capital projects associated with our recreation department. A lot of that as a result of the recreation uh, center roof project that we're going to go forward with in 23 and an increase in our street uh, program for 23. Overall, uh, appropriation ordinance of, 30, of just over $36 million, a $3.7 million increase from 2022 initial appropriation rates. That concludes my report tonight. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. All right, the first item on our agenda this evening is uh, Ordinance 2022-27. This is authorizing the mayor to enter into a lease agreement with PCs for People Minnesota LLC in furtherance of Cuyahoga County's PCs for People broadband expansion program. Move to adopt. Second. Second. To adapt, Meg Ryan Shackey? Yes. Andy Selhurts? Yes. Kathy Pucci? Yes. Aaron Borowski? Yes. Kevin Tansky? Yes. Andrew Grodick? Yes. Ron Van Kirk? No. The next several items under old business are on second reading. Ordinance 2022 29, authorizing the capital improvement plan for 2023. Ordinance 2022 30, amending section 505.21 titled Hunting, Poisoning, Trapping, Prohibited of the codified ordinances of the city of Brooklyn to amend the penalty provision. Ordinance 2022-32, enacting chapter 765 apartment complex security of the codified ordinances of the city of Brooklyn. Ordinance 2022-33, amending section 959.02 of the codified ordinances of the city of Brooklyn to amend eligibility guidelines for snow removal services provided by the city. Ordinance 2022-34, adopting new part 11 planning and zoning code of the codified ordinance of the city of brooklyn and the new official zoning map of the city ordinance 2022-35 providing for the submission to the electors of the city of brooklyn section 1102.09 of the codified ordinance of the city of brooklyn creating new public facilities pf and parks and open spaces po zoning districts ordinance 2022-36 submit rezoning of properties to public facilities pf to voters Ordinance 2022-37, submit rezoning of properties to park and open spaces, PO to voters. Ordinance 2022-38, submit rezoning of properties to general industrial, G-I to voters. Ordinance 2022-39, submit rezoning of properties to general business, G-B to voters. Ordinance 2022-40, submit rezoning of properties to dwelling house, D-H -H to voters. Ordinance 2022-41, Submit rezoning of properties to retail business, R-B to voters. In Ordinance 2022-42, submit rezoning of properties to apartment houses, A-H to voters. Under new legislation for this evening, the first four items are on first reading, but hope to pass by suspension of the rules. Resolution 2022-40, authorizing a community cost-sharing agreement with the Northeast Ohio Regional Sewer District. Any comments or questions? Introduce, oh. Introduced by Elvis to suspend the rules. Second. To suspend the rules. Meg Brian Shackey? Yes. Andy Selhurts? Yes. Kathy Pucci? Yes. Aaron Borowski? Yes. Kevin Tansky? Yes. Sue Grodick? Yes. Ryan Van Kirk? Yes. To adapt. Meg Brian Shackey? Yes. Andy Selhurts? Yes. Kathy Pucci? Yes. Aaron Borowski? Yes. Kevin Tansky? Yes. Sue Grodick? Yes. Ryan Van Kirk? Yes. Resolution 2022-41, approving the application of the City of Brooklyn to apply for a Community Devel Development Block Grant funds for the natatorium roof replacement project. 
additional comments or questions? No dispel, suspend the rules. So, okay. To suspend the rules, Meg Ryan Chackie? Yes. Andy Selhurts? Yes. Kathy Pucci? Yes. Aaron Borowski? Yes. Kevin Tansky? Yes. Sue Grodick? Yes. Ron Van Kirk? Yes. To adapt, Meg Ryan Chackie? Yes. Andy Selhurts? Yes. Kathy Pucci? Yes. Aaron Borowski? Yes. Kevin Tansky? Yes. Sue Grodick? Yes. Ron Van Kirk? Yes. Resolution 2022-42, approving the application of the City of Brooklyn to the Cuyahoga County Supplemental Grant Program for an exterior home repair grant program. Any comments or questions? Introduced by all to suspend the rules. Second. To suspend the rules, Meg Ryan Shackey? Yes. Andy Selhurts? Yes. Kathy Pucci? Yes. Aaron Borowski? Yes. Kevin Tansky? Yes. Sue Grodick? Yes. Ron Van Kirk? Yes. To adapt, Meg Ryan Shackey? Yes. Andy Selhurts? Yes. Kathy Pucci? Yes. Aaron Borowski? Yes. Kevin Tansky? Yes. Sue Grodick? Yes. Ron Van Kirk? Yes. Resolution 2022-43, Land and Water Conservation Fund Grant Application Approval. Any comments or questions? Introduced by all the suspend the rules. Okay. To suspend the rules, Meg Ryan Shackey? Yes. Andy Selhurts? Yes. Kathy Pucci? Yes. Aaron Borowski? Yes. Kevin Tansky? Yes. Sue Grodick? Yes. Ron Van Kirk? Yes. To adapt, Meg Ryan Shackey? Yes. Andy Selhurts? Yes. Kathy Pucci? Yes. Aaron Borowski? Yes. Kevin Tansky? Yes. Sue Grodick? Yes. Ron Van Kirk? Yes. The next five uh, pieces of legislation are on first reading. Resolution 2022-44, authorizing the mayor to enter, enter into an agreement with Senior Transportation Connection to provide senior bus transportation services in the city of Brooklyn. Ordinance 2022-44, amending section 505.08, certain animals prohibited and enacting section 505.27, restrictions on keeping of chickens of the codified ordinance of the city of Brooklyn to regulate the keeping of chickens. Ordinance 2022-45, amended annual appropriations, this is for 2022. Ordinance 2022-46, annual appropriations, this is for 2023. Ordinance 2022-47, amending Exhibit A of Ordinance 2022-43, providing for the compensation for the part-time, full-time, and administrative employees non bargaining agreement of the City of Brooklyn. For the appropriations for 2022 and 2023, those were the ordinances that Mr. Raguse was referring to uh, a moment ago. And then the last item on our agenda this evening, it is on first reading of hope to pass by suspension of the rules. This is ordinance 2022-48, accepting the medical insurance renewal for the Medical Mutual of Ohio for medical insurance coverage for eligible employees from January 1 to December 31 of 2023. This is a 0% increase from our current rate with Medical Mutual. Any comments or questions? Introduce by all suspend the rules. Okay. To suspend the rules. Meg Ryan Shackey? Yes. Andy Selhurts? Yes. Kathy Pucci? Yes. Aaron Borowski? Yes. Kevin Tansky? Yes. Sue Grodick? Yes. Ron Van Kirk? Yes. To adapt, Meg Ryan Shackey? Yes. Andy Selhurts? Yes. Kathy Pucci? Yes. Aaron Borowski? Yes. Kevin Tansky? Yes. Sue Grodick? Yes. Ron Van Kirk? Yes. That concludes our agenda for this evening. Does any other member of council or the mayor or any directors have anything to add? One quick question. We talked about sending the chicken <coughs> ordinance to committee. Did we have to officially do that? I'll make the motion that we refer Ordinance 2022-44 to committee. Second. To refer to committee, Meg Ryan Shackey. Yes. Andy Selhurts. Yes. Kathy Pucci. Yes. Aaron Borowski. Yes. Kevin Tansky. Yes. Sue Grodick. Yes. Ron Van Kirk. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Shackey. Right, anything else from anyone? All right. I do want to wish the residents of Brooklyn a happy Thanksgiving. Hope you enjoy time with friends and family. Be safe. And we'll see you at our next meeting. I'll make the motion to adjourn. Second. To adjourn, Meg Ryan Shackey? Yes. Andy Selhurts? Yes. Kathy Pucci? Yes. Aaron Borowski? Yes. Kevin Tansky? Yes. Sue Rodick? Yes. Ryan Van Kirk? Yes. Thank you, everyone. Have a blessed evening.